focus nowadays in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, recently, we have heard in the new cabinet of the UAE that the government has appointed two ministers to look after this important food security issue. We have uh, Her Excellency Maryam al Mheri, who is looking after this file as a food security from the government uh, perspective. And then we have His Excellency Mr. Uh, Abdullah Bilhif al Naimi, who is also appointed as a minister for climate change and who will also be in charge of the food security. So this gives us a great message that the government is focusing a lot, a lot on this uh, topic. And we have seen in the last, uh, I would say, a few months or even uh, a few years, but not so many years, a lot of the uh, business investors have shifted from different industry to the agro-business and the agriculture industries, whether they are greenhouses, whether they are hydroponics, or whether they are uh, vertical farming. And we have Mr. Uh, Heman Choka as well. He's the co-founder and the COO at uh, Vegetech. And before I ask my panelists actually to start introducing uh, themselves, I just want to give also a brief introduction about what we do as a uh, charge FBI office. We are the investment promotion uh, agency of the Emirates of Sharjah, but at the same time, we help actually creating a new opportunities uh, within the Emirates of Sharjah. And I think the agro-business is something that we will be uh, promoting and focusing on heavily, especially after what have what have happened with the COVID-19 and the whole world realized that uh, the food security and the agro-businesses is one of the most and basic uh, sectors that all governments should focus on. I will move to uh, our friend uh, Hemant from Vegetech. If you can please uh, give us a, an introduction about Vegetech. Although I visited the, uh, the farm, uh, we want to know more about what do you do personally and then on Vegetech level as well. Sure. So thank you so much. Uh, firstly, it's a real privilege to be on this panel with such elite members. Uh, Dr. Ghanem, you know, we know we really respect him a lot for all the work he has done in food security and all the numbers which he kind of talks about. So, you know, we really look up to him to kind of, uh, you know, seek inspiration all the time. Uh, thank you to you, Mohammed, for inviting us in here. Uh, you know, I have to kind of, you know, uh, you know, you know, say how thankful we are at Vegetech to, to, to be looked after and, you know, to be cared for by leaders like yourself. You know, the fact that, you know, you took time out of your busy diary and spent so much time with us on our farms try to learn what we are doing and try to actually you know, understand the technology we bring in really means a lot to us. So thank you so much, you know, for that as well, Mohammed, you know, from an invest in charger perspective. Uh, Vegetech is an agrotech organization. We have been based in the UAE since 2016. Uh, our headquarters are in Seoul in South Korea. Uh, we bring in technology to disrupt agriculture, specifically in three areas, which are the challenges to traditional farming in UAE. Those are soil, temperature, and water. So we focus on trying to create sustainable and environmental friendly farms using technology to create the maximum output in a 12 month cycle. So as you know, uh, the region essentially uh, has 40 degree plus temperature for at least five months of the year, which makes traditional farming very hard. Uh, add to that the, the, the lack of topsoil in the country because of the desert region we are in. And plus the fact that it's a desert area. So we actually always have to rely on groundwater mostly to kind of get uh, the water for our farms. So this is where we have brought in technology in the form of indoor vertical farms and hydroponics technology so that we can convert our greenhouses into literally the coolest greenhouses in UAE. At the same time, convert indoor spaces into grow areas, which can provide you agricultural produce for 12 months a year. We decided not to just talk about this technology, but land the technology in Sharjah. So, you know, I would really, you know, once, you know, hopefully the COVID situation improves, 
we would love to invite you to come to our farms, like how you know Dr. Ghanem has come in, Mohammed has come in onto the farm to come in. So you can come and sample this technology for yourself. So we have an eight acre farm, which is 32,000 square meters, which we call the lab. And this lab is where you can come and touch and feel the technology, which we bring to the region. The technology is not just for the sake of technology, but actually creates commercial grade farms where the investors and the customers can get return on investment. We have also tried to kind of make a, a social enterprise out of Vegetech. So we have involved the community a lot. We actually have a lot of applied research projects with the University of Sharjah, the American University of Sharjah. And lately we have set ourselves up uh, the Vegetech Innovation Labs in the uh, exciting space of Sharjah Research Technology Innovation Park. So we are really immersing ourselves into the ecosystem which Sharjah offers to us because we do believe that the students are our future leaders. And if we want to be a food secure nation, our students have to be part of that story. And hence we really welcome. So last year we had more than 3000 students who came and visited the farms where they were given a, a first hand view of what technology can do for the region. Plus they get to take home some fresh produce from the farm. So we, this is what we actually are trying to focus on, where we are bringing technology to create a positive social impact onto our society itself. So this is you know, where we're kind of going with. Uh, you know, with the grace of you know, the good Lord plus the, the, the blessings of our friends and family, we now actually have around 60 acres of farms that we have built and we operate within UAE. We produced last year more than 1.6 million kilograms of fresh vegetables that kind of actually went into the households of UAE. Plus, we also have now got technology that creates food transparency. And you will hear me talk a little bit about that you know, later on. But this is where sitting at home, looking at a QR code, everybody can understand the seeding date of the, uh, the tomato. They can understand what is the nutrition that we used to kind of grow that tomato. Did we use any fertilizers? What is the calorie count of that particular crop? And for the first time as a consumer, you can see the greenhouse or the part of the farm from where this produce has come. So we are also creating technology where we want to address the concerns of the consumer that how fresh is my produce. And now we have brought that technology as well as part of Vegetech. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. We are lucky today actually to have a local investor and a foreign investor and also a, a sector expert and a consulting firm who is also involved into financing and funds who might be interested in these kinds of sectors and businesses. Let's go back to, uh, to Mr. Hammond. Vegetech, a company that was established in 2016 in Korea. Uh, and now you are engaged in the ecosystem of uh, the Emirate of Sharjah. You are part of Sharjah Research and Technology Park. Uh, you are engaged with different government entities. You are engaged with the students, the universities. What made you uh, decide to, to come to this part of the world or to charge us specifically? Uh, that's a very good question, Mohammed. Uh, I think, uh, I think firstly, the technology that we created uh, in, in Seoul in South Korea, we did that around seven years ago. We spent four years researching and trialing the technology across 18 harvest cycles, checking against 96 molecules of the produce that comes through to make sure that this is a robust technology that can be scaled to the industry level. Once we did that, that's when we actually arrived in Sharjah. As we mentioned, there were, I think, three key factors uh, in terms of how we arrived in Sharjah. I think, firstly, I would really like to um, highlight uh, Sheikha Jamila, uh, the first project with Vegetech worked on was the Al Zaya School in Korfakan, where it was her vision to set up a smart farm for the children of that school. So I cannot thank her enough uh, for her vision of bringing a company like Vegetech into Sharjah to focus on that project. From there on, the uh, the business friendly environment in Sharjah is very very important. I think the access to leaders like yourself, Mohammed, uh, the access to leaders like Man, uh, His Excellency Marwan Al Sarkar, this is what actually gives us the edge as businessmen. The ease of doing business is very, very important. And also, I would like to even uh, you know highlight the role of Dr. Ghanim. Dr. Ghanim is a pioneer in in the space of agriculture for the country. 
and even his openness to uh, welcome vegetech you know come to our farms give us his advice you know invite us to his farms this just shows you the camaraderie that we share in this in in charge so i i think this is very very unique and i must salute the uh, you know the uh, the vision of, of his excellency you know to kind of create such a uh, spirit of brotherhood in the in in the in the, in the emirate itself so that's very important second part i would say is the focus on education uh, the university ecosystem that is actually you can feel it uh, the vibrancy in charge the access to more than 30 or 1000 students in the university of sharjah in the american university of sharjah and the fact that the sharjah research technology innovation park is right in the middle of that particular ecosystem and it's not just that it's available there the if you see the the quality of projects that we are doing for example right now we are running a project with the university of sharjah uh, with the head of electrical engineering department where we are creating a glove which using bio impedance can tell how fresh a cucumber is how fresh a tomato is and when you combine that with virtual reality glasses that tomato will talk to you and tell you is it fit to eat so this is where and this this is where we are kind of you know driving technology in agriculture in this in in the in the emirate of sharjah so this is just one small example which we are working on we are also working with the architecture students in university of sharjah where we are trying to architect the future indoor vertical farms how will they look how can we optimize the space how can we optimize the uh, the you know the path of the sun in sharjah so that we can actually create the direction of the indoor vertical farm where we can get the sunlight from the from the from the sun but also shielded away from the temperature of the sun so this is the experiments we are doing with the students of the architecture uh, unit within the university of sharjah architecture team you know to kind of you know bring some of these things uh, together uh you will see very soon that we will actually be bringing in the photobio reactor into sharjah research technology innovation park where we will be farming food grade algae so you know of course we want to kind of make sure that the per square meter production from our farms is 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 good so currently in our greenhouses we are producing somewhere between 35 kilograms to 40 kilograms of produce per square meter per annum in our indoor vertical farms we are producing 900 kilograms per square meter per annum but we also want to bring in some new areas which is where the uh, the food uh, the food grade algae farming is coming in where we would like to start creating chlorella spirulina and hopefully astrazenthin as well so these will be the areas where we want to start pioneering and you know bring innovation into into sharjah itself so this is what i would say is one of the attractions of why vegetech basically set itself up in sharjah excellent uh, thank you so much mr haman uh, haman one last question uh what do you think uh the focus should be to create a positive environment for the agrotech businesses not necessary from the government i mean from all the stakeholder and this whole agrotech ecosystem absolutely and and thank you for mentioning that moment because as vegetech we are really uh focusing on the entire stakeholder ecosystem because we think that it's a networked economy because it's only the networked economies that will survive in the digital world here. so for us it's very important to understand who the stakeholders are so i'll start with the consumers first here i think we need to as an industry and i think you know this is where somebody like vegetech and you know dr ganem stimal and remark we have to step up and we have to raise the awareness in consumers of what is the benefits of actually having local produce i know for a fact on my farm that 1000 kilograms of cucumbers will reduce 235 kilograms of carbon emissions here. if i am able to translate this into my consumers the next time my consumer goes into the supermarket they will be wanting to kind of pick up the local produce so this is where that's the first part i would kind of say the second part i would say is our entire b2b and the b2r space i think dr ganem has already mentioned that part but we need to ensure that we are able to uh, you know incentivize in some way those partners so that they can actually go for the local produce over an imported uh, item you know which is coming from the outside thirdly we have to involve the academia and the innovation labs we have to really get them structured to kind of focus on that stuff and i'm really happy that with uh, with uh, sharjah research technology innovation park and with the university of sharjah ecosystem we have found that space there so i think that's very very important to kind of energize that particular segment and lastly there are a few pockets which do need to uh, focus on 
I would I would actually point out two of those, and I don't want to be critical about them, but it's just that we need to kind of pay more focus on those. So the first one essentially is around the insurance sector. On the agriculture industry side, we do need to kind of start looking at some insurance practices which will assist the insurer as well as the farmer. So we need to kind of actually bring some of those elements in place. And the second one I would say is around the financing side of things, where when you want to have new entrants coming into the market, how would you adjust your financing capabilities, which will allow for some finance to be made available specifically for the current working capital of the agriculture industry? Because the peaks and troughs of the agriculture industry are a bit different from all of the others, given the weather patterns and the technologies they may be utilizing. So that would, I would say, would be something which I would, you know, kind of actually bring to the table. I would, I'm also very happy that because we have some very visionary leaders, we are getting, uh, we are getting the ears of those leadership, and they are looking to kind of improve some of those elements as well. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Haman. Another uh, question also. Uh, which talks about any efforts in the future to increase the use of solar. So both, most of the questions are actually around the 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 power and the water. Yeah. So if I may, if I may uh, take that question a uh, moment. Uh, so I think yes. Uh, I think on the agriculture farmland, the cost of electricity is subsidized to the farmer. So I think that is definitely good news, which you have. Uh, and hence, it's not such an issue in terms of actually having indoor vertical farms coming on the on the agriculture farmlands uh, here. But even uh, even in the COVID environment, you know, and this is where we are having conversation with the real estate industry people, working with a partner like Vegetech, where we own all the components of technology, we would be able to convert warehouses that are potentially empty right now into indoor vertical farms, even with commercial electricity rates, we would be able to give you 20% plus ROI. So, you know, this is how, uh, you know, this is the potential of the market because as Dr. Ghanem mentioned, only 20% is produced locally. The upside is 80%, especially in the green leafies that are produced in the indoor vertical farms. There is a huge demand coming into the hospitality sector, coming into the, uh, you know, the, uh, into the uh, hotel industry, which are looking for this produced 12 months a year, which you can satisfy using the indoor vertical farm technology. Thank you. Another one interesting um, comment from one of the attendees that talks about the agricultural universities or are there any training institutes in the UAE which can train traditional farmers to adapt to new technologies in, in farming? Uh, I don't think, I haven't heard of any. I don't know if uh, any of the panelists have heard or there are you heard that there are plans within our universities to introduce such a program. I think Mr. Hement is, is the right person. They are already taking this initiative and supporting individually, but I hope it can take into more into an institute rather than a social, uh, you know, uh, added value. So I think he is the right person to, to comment on that. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ghanim. Yes, so we have a learning hub on the farm. We are creating a center of excellence for alternative agriculture practices. Uh, the curriculum is already in place where we are able to kind of take uh, farmers. So we actually have been quite uh, honored to have two of the uh, uh, agronomists from MOCA, which is Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, to come to the farms and re uh, visit all the work that is done uh, you know, on our farms in the indoor vertical farms and on the hydroponic side of things. So we are, we are developing that curriculum. And as rightly mentioned by Dr. Ghanem, now we will associate ourselves uh, with the federal ministry and are, we are taking the whole education program uh, into, into the ministry as well. So hopefully you'll see a lot more activity happening in that space. We're also very happy over the next month, we have created a program for six year olds to 10 year olds, 10 year olds to 14 year olds and 14 year olds to 18 year olds uh, under the auspices of, uh, of uh, Her Excellency Maria Mary, where we'll be doing webinars for children to get them closer nice. to knowing their food and how they can grow their food. Well, thank, thank you. So we have uh, reached to the end of our interesting session. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ghanem. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Thank you, Mr. Hammond, for all these uh, insights uh, and rich information. Uh, 
Uh, I hope also the attendees have benefited a lot from these insights. We had some other questions, but actually because of the, uh, of the timing of the session, we are sorry we cannot take all of the questions. Again, thanks a lot for the panelists and for the attendees uh, for attending this session. And hopefully we will be together very soon discussing some of the initiatives that the government will take forward out of this session, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.